You have mentioned that there's interdimensional p potential. Could you expound on that? Hello everyone, welcome back to Eddie Style Channel and welcome back to the biggest story in the world and in my opinion of all time. Today we will continue with the David Grush and the UAP saga from last time and if you don't know basically there is a whistleblower his name is David Grush he worked at a secret department that basically retrieves and studies UFO or aka alien spacecraft and even alien bodies but it conceals it from Congress oversight and from the American public and from the world. So we have three witnesses. One of them is David Grush, retired commander David Fravor, who is a former commanding officer at Black Ace Squadron of the US Navy. He chased the famous Tic Tac UFO back in 2004. The third witness is Ryan Graves, who's also a former US Navy pilot who also chased a UFO and even said that they were seeing them on a daily basis. So three really, really credible witnesses who testify under oath in Congress. Basically, that means that if they are lying, if David Grush cannot bring forward all the evidence to what he's saying, then he goes to jail. Think about that. I think it's time for this country to take back our country. We need to tell the folks at the Pentagon they work for us. Dad gummit, we don't work for them. Wow, so Mr. Bruchet is pissed about the situation. He's pissed about the Pentagon. He was recently denied access from documents. He was also supposed to chair this committee, but a night before, he was informed that he will not chair the committee. I don't think there is a conspiracy theory going on. I just really think that there was a misunderstanding or of some sort. Considering the thousands of testimonies and videos taken on people's phones and eyewitnesses accounts made by credible witnesses such as doctors, pilots, scientists, and active duty service members, it is unacceptable to continue to gaslight Americans into thinking that this is not happening or that the potential of intelligence, uh, intelligent life forms exists other than humans. Wow. Can you believe what we're seeing in Congress? Let's go hear what Mr. Garcia had to say in his opening statement. Now, we have incidents where sensors, sometimes even multiple types of sensors, detect things that we cannot explain. UAPs, whatever they may be, may pose a serious threat to our military or civilian aircraft, and that must be understood. Now, my career and training as a longtime and career educator and teacher and researcher tell me that we should never rule anything out. We know that our space, of course, is vast and undiscovered. He opens the door again to being open to the fact that there are other intelligent lives out there that made their way to Earth, which again, for me, this is a dream come true to have this hearing. We can't be afraid of asking questions and we can't be afraid of the truth. I love that he said that. It's just so simple but powerful. We can't be afraid of asking questions and we can't be afraid of the truth. The public has a right to learn about technologies of unknown origins, non-human intelligence, and unexplainable phenomena. Those are not the words of a UFO Twitter account. Though that is a direct quote from Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, that the American public has a right to learn about technologies of unknown origins, non-human intelligence, and unexplainable phenomena. Can I first just start by saying that I really like the suit of Mr. Moskowitz. So Chuck Schumer, the majority leader, said that the public has the right to know. I feel like everybody's on this case right now. This is nuts. It's time for Congress to reinsert ourselves. I call on our military leaders and intelligence officials to release more information to the American people about UAPs and to our military leaders. If there's nothing to conceal, let Congress go to Wright Patterson Air Force Base, the Dugway Proving Ground, or even Groom Lake in Nevada. We should have disclosure today. We should have disclosure tomorrow. The time has come. Wow, loud and clear from Mr. Moskowitz. He echoes the message of Mr. Burchett by saying, we are Congress. We need to reinstate ourselves and we need to show them that we are the boss. Let's see what the first witness, former Navy pilot Ryan Graves, has to say. During a training mission in Warning Area Whiskey 72, 10 miles off the coast of Virginia Beach, two F-18 Super Hornets were split by a UAP. 
The object, described as a dark gray or a black cube inside of a clear sphere, came within 50 feet of the lead aircraft and was estimated to be 5 to 15 feet in diameter. The mission commander terminated the flight immediately and returned base. Our squadron submitted a safety report, but there was no official acknowledgement of the incident and no further mechanism to report the sightings. Soon, these encounters became so frequent that air crew would discuss the risk of UAP as part of their regular pre-flight briefs. Now let's hear what David Grush, the man, the myth, the legend, has to say in his opening statement. At the time, due to my extensive executive level intelligence support duties, I was cleared to literally all uh, relevant compartments and in a position of extreme trust, both in my military and civilian capacities. Uh, I was informed in the course of my official duties of a multi-decade uh, UAP crash retrieval and reverse engineering program. So David Grush basically says, hey, I'm the most credible person in the world. I was trusted with things that only a few people in the entire US military were trusted with. In my civilian capacity, in my professional capacity, I'm crisp clean and I'm telling you that I saw those things and I'm going forward to tell the world about that. Here's former Commander Fravor. Uh, the controller told us that these objects uh, had been observed for over two weeks coming down from over 80,000 feet rapidly descending to 20,000 feet, hanging out for hours, and then going straight back up. For those who don't realize, above 80,000 feet is space. So Commander Fravor, who spent years and years as a Navy pilot, crazily credible person, says that there were UFOs that were seen descending from literally space to the Earth in a matter of a few seconds, hanging out there for a few hours, and then ascending into space again. <laughs> what? What concerns me is that there's no oversight from our elected officials on anything associated with our government processing or working on craft. Uh, believe not from this world. This wow. What concerns me is that there is no congressional oversight, and I'm paraphrasing, of vehicles that are believed to be not of this world. Uh, just either describe or note that aircraft that are being witnessed, particularly by the 30 folks that you're working with, are essentially outside the scope of anything that we know of today and the technology we have today. Mr. Graves, Mr. Fravor? Yes, uh, the objects that are being seen by commercial pilots are uh, performing maneuvers that are unexplainable due to our current understanding of our technology and our capabilities as a country. And that applies for the military as well. Mr. 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 Fravor? Yeah, I concur with that. We have nothing that can stop in midair and go the other direction, nor do we have anything that can, like in our situation, come down from space, hang out for three hours and go back up. So basically the question of feasibility in terms of physics comes up, and it will come up later again, of whether or not it's even possible by the laws of physics as we understand them to maneuver in the ways that the UFOs maneuver. Mr. Gresh, finally, do you believe that our government is in possession of UAPs? Uh, absolutely, based on interviewing uh, over 40 witnesses over four years. And, and, and where? I know the exact locations, and, and those locations were provided to the Inspector General and some of which to the Intelligence Committees. I actually had the people with the first-hand knowledge um, provide a protected disclosure to the Inspector General. Again, folks, Mr. Grush says that he provided all the details to the inspector general about specifically, not abstractly, we have UFO somewhere in our possession, specifically. This is huge. Again, he's under oath. He's out in the public. If, if he lies, he goes to jail. Let's hear the question of Mr. Burleson that said that he is a skeptic. He's from Missouri, and unless he sees it, he won't believe it. Let's hear what he has to say. Has any of the activity um, been aggressive, been um, hostile in your reports? Uh, I know of multiple colleagues of mine that got physically injured. And uh, the activity... And I gotta, by, I, by UAPs or by, by people within the, the federal government? Both. Okay, yeah. so yeah. there has been activity by, by alien or non-human non technology and or beings that has caused harm to humans? Uh, I can't get into the specifics in a, an open environment, but at least the activity that I personally witnessed 
not to be very careful here because uh, you don't, you know, they tell you never to acknowledge tradecraft, right? So what I personally witnessed myself and my wife was very disturbing. That's mind blowing, absolutely mind blowing. And you can tell how Mr. Burleson is, he almost can't utter the, the words that comes out of his mouth when he asks, so you're saying that non-human origin aliens hurt people or something like that, I'm paraphrasing, but you can see that he asks this question in Congress and he almost like, he, he feels so uncomfortable because this is so crazy. This is so, so, so crazy. And I don't understand how all the world, the entire world talks only about that. But that's why I'm here to talk about that because I love talking about that. My view has been that we are billions of light years away from any, any other system. And the concept that an alien species that's technologically advanced enough to travel billions of light years gets here and somehow is incompetent enough to not survive <laughs> Earth or crashes Fact is, so. is something that I find a little bit far-fetched. And with that being said, you have mentioned that there's interdimensional p potential. Could you expound on that? This is, in my opinion, the most interesting part of the entire congressional hearing. David Grush, who, by the way, has a physics degree, will talk about interdimensional possibility. I can't. Let's go listen to that. I'll get to answer your first question, and you know, I'm here as a fact witness and expert, but I, I will give you a, a theoretical framework, at least to work off, to kind of espouse uh, crashes, uh, regardless of uh, you know, your level of sentience, right? You know, planes crash, cars crash, N number of sorties, what, however high, a small percentage are going to end in you know, mission failure, if you will, as we say in the, in the Air Force. Uh, and then in terms of uh, multidimensionality, that kind of thing, the, the framework uh, that I'm familiar with, for example, is something called the holographic principle. Uh, both, uh, it's, it derives itself from general relativity and uh, quantum mechanics, and that is, if you want to imagine a 3D object such as yourself casting a shadow onto a 2D surface, uh, that's the holographic principle. So you can be projected, quasi-projected from higher dimensional space to lower dimensional. It's a scientific trope that you can actually cross, literally, as far as I understand, but there's probably guys with PhDs that we could probably but, argue about that. But wow. I just cannot believe what I'm seeing. Like, genuinely, I cannot believe what I'm seeing. Grush alludes to the fact that there are more dimensions, let's say the fourth, from which they can pop into our existence and then go back to their dimension. Again, this is not some conspiracy theorist on the internet talking. This is David Grush and those witnesses are beyond credible. And this is under oath in Congress in front of the, the world and Congress people. This is absolutely insane. I cannot get over it for a second. Did the Tic Tac UAP move in such a way that defied the laws of physics? The way we understand them, yes. If you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries, yeah. I guess human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. Wow, so here's a public admission that biological beings were recovered with the crafts. In, in your career, have you ever seen a propulsion system that creates no thermal exhaust? No. Can you describe how the aircraft maneuvered? Uh, abruptly, uh, very determinate. It knew exactly what it was doing. It was aware of our presence and it had acceleration rates. I mean, it went from zero to matching our speed in no time at all. Now, if the fastest plane on earth was trying to do these maneuvers that you saw, would it be capable of doing that? No, not even close. Many pilots that encounter UFOs report that they feel like the UFOs toy with them and can understand them and is aware of their presence. There's some type of 
mystical communication going on between the pilot and the UFOs when they uh, sort of interact, which is very interesting, I think. Because, and here I'll talk about my little conspiracy, is not related to the video, but many people that allegedly were abducted by UFOs. Now, if, if aliens are real, then it raises the question whether or not some, at least some of the people that reported that they were abducted by UFOs, some cases with multiple eyewitnesses, um, are true. And if they are true, then the majority of people claim that they were interacted telepathically and that they and the alien beings were understanding each other without using verbal language. So maybe that's what can happen between uh, two vehicles. I don't know, but this is just my little spin on it. Let's continue with that. If the aircraft was armed, do you believe that your aircraft or any aircraft in possession of the United States could have shot the Tic Tac down? I'd say no. Just on the performance, it would just left in a, in a split second. It looks like that we have a problem here that needs further investigation. <laughs> yes. Yes, you have a problem that needs further investigation because if the most skillful pilots and the latest technology that we have cannot match even closely the technology of the UFOs and if at will you cannot shoot them down, then you have a national threat. That's exactly what these pilots are saying. So this was the hearing in a nutshell and my personal question is why nobody asked whether or not the US military has ties or is cooperating with other countries regarding the retrieval and study of UAPs. And if UFOs and aliens really exist and they come to this planet, then they must be everywhere in the world. Next, David Grush will provide all the Congress people in the subcommittee with evidence, direct evidence and direct list of witnesses, both cooperative and hostile witnesses that know everything about those projects and as well exact locations of where those UAP crafts, alien crafts and alien bodies are held. I believe that soon we will uncover it and we will uncover it for good. So I'm super duper excited. Let me know what you think about that. Are you pumped like me? Do you think it's a hoax? Do you think it's just a distraction for other things that are going on? Because surprisingly, every time that there is news about UFOs, people claim that this is a distraction, which I would reply that there's always something going on and there's never a good time to report about UFOs and aliens. It will always seem like a distraction. I'm about to attend law school, so I'll be busy, but I promise that I will make an effort to keep updating you on this saga and also because I just love spending time in my room and talking hours and hours about this. So thank you very much, subscribe to Eddie Style channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.